So here it is, the legendary Barrett 50 caliber anti-material rifle. If you ever wanted to buy a gun for the sole purpose of inconveniencing you by having to lug it back and forth in a giant case, weighing over 30 pounds, and chambered in $5 bills, this rifle has your name written all over it. First and foremost, the Barrett 50 caliber rifles are not and were not designed to be sniper rifles, despite what video games and movies have led many to believe. In fact, I checked Barrett's current sales literature and could not find the word sniper anywhere. These guns were designed with destruction in mind, that is, destroying or disabling light vehicles, satellite arrays, and if you need to destroy a canteen or zipper that just so happens to be attached to an enemy combatant, that's fair game. The Barrett 50s were designed by Ronnie Barrett in 1980 to allow shooters to lob 50 BMG with more accuracy and precision than an M2HB generally allows for, and at a quarter of the weight. The rifles were an almost immediate success, and even the CIA acquired some to deliver to the Mujahideen in their fight against the USSR. Battle proven, the Barretts were catching the eyes of militaries and police units around the world. Inside the transit case, the consumer is provided with the barrel assembly, upon which is a long Picatinny rail for mounting an optic of the user's choice, a large and prominent muzzle brake, backup iron sights, and the barrel return spring assembly. The lower group features a bipod, the recoil assembly, monopod, and trigger group. The bolt group is quite hefty as well and features a large triangular bolt head that is very reminiscent of the Australian leader rifles whose designer, Charles St. George, worked at Barrett. Barrett magazines hold 10 rounds of ammunition and are quite large. Overlaying an M16 magazine conveys the sheer size, as does an M14 magazine. 50 BMG is not exactly a cartridge for a frontline infantryman's rifle, and is quite serious when you compare it to a smaller cartridge. Loading the magazines is also quite easy. They are staggered, double column, double feed, and load like larger versions of FAL, M14, or G3 magazines. The rifle is assembled by first pulling the barrel out of the receiver all the way and pushing the black polymer bushing all the way to the rear. At this point, the user hooks the barrel return spring assembly onto the barrel. There is a hook on the upper that allows it to mate to a cross pin on the lower assembly and the user should lock the upper into the lower. At this point, draw the bolt to the rear and lower the upper onto the lower. A non-captive pin will secure the two assemblies at the rear and an additional pin secures them at the center. The final step is rocking in the magazine and you are good to go. Now in front of us is a fully assembled Barrett M107 rifle, which is the latest military version of the older M82 rifle. The Barrett is easy to operate and features a large charging handle on the right side of the gun. The safety is very reminiscent of that of an M16 rifle and positively clicks into fire. The M107's large Picatinny rail allows users to mount an optic of their choice, this one sporting a loophole. And the M107's giant muzzle brake allows for the mounting of a sound suppressor. The bipod is easily deployable, and when combined with the rear monopod, creates a very stable shooting platform. Now there are two basic models of the Barrett that are available, the M82 and the M107 rifles. Differences are relatively minor, but let's take a look. First, the M107 has a rear-mounted cheek piece made of polymer. I have actually been burned after the sun has heated up the metal on the rear of a regular M82. The most obvious difference are the rifle's muzzle brakes. The M82's is belled out, while the M107's is cylindrical. The coloring on the two models is slightly different as well, as the M107 features a coated barrel, rail, and furniture. That said, both rifles function via the same short recoiling action and otherwise both provide a very similar shooting experience. 
There's an interesting dichotomy here. I would place these rifles on a list of 10 guns to shoot before you die, but also on a list of 10 firearms that aren't as fun as you think. Shooting a Barrett can be quite thrilling, but finding a range where you can really stretch its legs is incredibly difficult. Ammunition is expensive, and the concussive blast begins to rattle the hell out of your brain the more you shoot it. That said, the recoil is actually not as bad as you would think, and I would liken it to a shotgun firing 3.5 inch magnum shells, which is actually worse in my opinion. So we hope this overview provided you with some good information about the two predominant Barrett rifles on the market. Which one you prefer is up to you, but from a shooter's perspective, I can tell you that I've never noticed any noteworthy differences. They're big, heavy, expensive, and incredibly badass. This is Alex C. with TFB TV. Thank you to Ventura Munitions for providing ammunition for our shooting videos, and thank you very much for watching.